will have a descriptor for each interest point and then we have a high dimensional space and uh, we want to then cluster them to come up with the words and that will be our vocabulary. With English language has vocabulary for thousands of years ago. But visual words we don't have vocabulary, so we have to come up with our own vocabulary. Oh, okay. So we're called. Uh, so we're called the Scandinavian Institute of um, Computational Vandalism. Which, okay, thanks. Which uh, one meaning of that? Uh, the CV is uh, in part a pun on computer vision, and as you just saw, that was a clip from a, a series of lectures published uh, from the University of uh, Central Florida, I believe it is, uh, from a computer engineering course uh, about computer vision. But it has another meaning. Is it? Yes, the the name of uh, of the institute is. Um, is derived from a, a project um, from uh, the painter Asger Jorn um, that started um, in the in the 60s, a sort of uh, photographic survey of uh, the arts of the Vandals, and uh, the Vandals had a, a very particular characteristic is that uh, they didn't uh, make art from a clean and empty surface, but they would draw upon already existing images. And uh, so, for instance, uh, the most uh, earlier graffiti that uh, we can find in art history come from, uh, from the Vandals. And the idea of, uh, of Jorn while doing that was to look for a culture um, where he could find uh, a way to talk about images using images. And, uh, the, the different uh, publications he made from this archive are what you can see here, a sort of long collections of images that are uh, put next to each other at, and that are in, uh, in dialogue. So here you can see a long series of images containing feet or foot. And here, one of his uh, most uh, well-known book uh, la Langue Crue et la Cuite, where he gather images from uh, multiple sources and highlights. So it's, a, it's, it's not only uh, a collection of images, but it's also a painterly intervention on these images to highlight the presence of Thong in surprising ways in the, the, the different pictures he has collected. So the, 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 the presentation we will, we will make is about this uh, attempt to try to engage with a in a dialogue with images, um, trying to find ways to um, not describe the images from the outside with words, with historiography, with uh, textual description, but to try to see how we can make uh, from the image uh, to make emerge um, a way, uh, a, a, a series of description uh, that comes from the image itself. Um, and to do that, uh, what we, st we, we started um, a few years ago was to look with curiosity in what computer vision algorithms would offer us to do so. And uh, one of our first um, let's say, uh, experiment with that was to, to look uh, on something called the surf features. Basically, surf features are elements in an image that um, remain stable even if this image is rotated, for instance. Uh, these are elements, many of you are familiar with it, but uh, these are elements that are used, for instance, to um, create a, a panorama of different images and to stitch these images together. And we were interested uh, not only in, in knowing about the existence of these elements, but also in looking into um, what they are and to, to sort of use the lens of the algorithm to discover 
uh, a new um, uh, new aspects of, uh, within the images. So, for instance, what Michael is doing here is uh, to scan through uh, an image that order uh, by size all the surf features discovered in an image. And, uh, of course, the more uh, we go in the, in the bigger details, we see what for the algorithm uh, is important, is somehow uh, what identifies this, images, this image proper. Uh, can go to the next slide. Okay. Press the plus. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe go yeah. a bit longer. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, for instance, this one. So, for instance, what we started to do then was to see how these uh, these little elements, these sort of features, could um, how they could help to connect different images together. So, for instance, here are. Uh, a feature taken from uh, sorry <laughs> here taken from one image and a feature taken from the other and it's where the algorithm find uh, a sort of point that is extremely similar between the two images and of course it directs our uh, our look to completely different parts of the image than what we would do if we want to identify the content of this image or if we want to uh, somehow uh, look at it spontaneously, so it, it, it really changes, um, uh, it, it directs our look to, uh, to, to, very, uh, to a very different vocabulary to talk about the image and a visual vocabulary to talk about it. Yeah, maybe you can show the, the, um, the network. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so. So actually, indeed, as we started to work with, uh, in this case, I started working with SIFT, which is indeed a sort of patent encumbered, uh, not completely free software algorithm for doing features as well, like SURF. Um, and actually just trying to get a grip on indeed what, what are these features. So this is an interface actually, um, well, actually, I quite like, oh, I didn't pull that one open. Um, so anyway, this is an interface that you can kind of scroll through a series of, of images and looking at their features, you can place them back in their original position in the image, um, eventually kind of putting the image back to kind of see, but you can also sort of really literally take them apart, start to kind of consider uh, what they are as elements, and eventually, for instance, features have uh, a predominant direction in, in addition to a size, so you can, of course, like order them in a way by their kind of uh, orientation or look at the scale and eventually you know consider the entire collection of images in this way um, which is kind of a, a kind of collage you know method when you when you yeah start to see also becomes this kind of very strange sort of chewing monster uh, <laughs> but yeah and I mean and it was just sort of playful and it, and it was an interesting link let's say I mean continuously I think we're interested in these kinds of links despite the quote we started from you know we're interested in actually how the history of kind of visual arts can talk to let's say computer vision of today um, and so sort of let's say taking these tools and and considering them actually uh, sort of means of, of producing collage is 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 very interesting not just in kind of simulating the surfaces of the past but in a sense reinvestigating the materials of the past with kind of contemporary techniques and considering what that could mean. Um, this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> so this is an interface, sorry, uh, that, um, well, we started actually uh, then looking, we made a kind of interface where we wanted to look at actually images in their layers. So in some sense, actually inspired by a kind of GIMP, or, or bitmap, let's say, kind of program, imagining where uh, you could take images and look at, say, uh, red channel, uh, look at the, the gradients, uh, look at uh, the contours, uh, switch off, actually, let's see. Uh, actually, even uh, in some cases, apply uh, text. Uh, sorry, actually, that was... Uh, 
not the same image, but consider actually as well what happens when you yeah throw uh, uh, OCR software at it and look for text within an image. So just actually in a way trying to get a grip on this sort of, in fact, when you start to take a something as simple, let's say, as SIFT, which is not simple at all, in fact, you come to a whole kind of layer cake. We kind of, you know, talk about the princess and the pea of there's an incredible stack of actually uh, decisions and representations and algorithms that are involved in uh, you know, picking uh, out a particular segment of an image and considering that a feature, for instance, to do with uh, image gradients. Um, and so we enjoyed this uh, interface as a way to, let's say, look at an archive. So in this case, it's a kind of random walk through the archive where based on each of the different orderings, or sorry, based on each of the different filters, you have ways of ordering. Um, was that five? Five, yeah. Okay, just again. <laughs> um, and so this kind of walks through, actually what it does is here it builds up all the layers of a single image, then picks, in this case, SIFT features, and then it's moving through adjacent images based on probably, I mean, they're global properties in this case, like maybe total number of SIFT features or total length of the contour or total amount of textuality determined by using uh, uh, OCR. What's the OCR software? I, I can't. Uh, okay, sorry. Does, <laughs> Tesseract. Sorry, Tesseract. I wanted to say Tesseract. Tesseract. Um, yeah, and these are all indeed kinds of ways to, let's say, look at an archive in a, in a different way. Um, for instance, we were also actually uh, using uh, the same, oh, I took it away, but uh, for instance, simply tracing the algorithms, and we were going to mention this because it's actually, at, at the moment, it's, uh, this is on display uh, at the Photographer's Gallery here in London, uh, a tracings uh, installation where we just take the original photographs from Oscar Yorn's uh, SICV, the old original uh, com uh, com comparative analysms uh, photographs, and then just apply OpenCV uh, contour detection, and then uh, eventually <laughs> you start to see uh, there, uh, the image trace. Um, so it's just a way actually to look again at these images uh, and kind of revalue them, reconsider them. Uh, and I think the last thing that we're going to show, or have I skipped something? I mean, the last thing that we did was an installation uh, which was quite playful and uh, uh, I think looks uh, nice to see, which was uh, we're both working in uh, Constant, an office in Brussels. This is some test images. And in this case, what you have is was an installation that ran for 40 days in the window of Constant. Uh, and uh, basically doing uh, face detection, again, one of the, a very high level detection, a hard cascade based on a training set of the default frontal face, probably the most popular uh, kind of application of hard cascade. And basically just detecting faces first in live images, then replacing faces from other faces detected in an archive, in this case from a Norwegian graphic designer we work with as well, Gutjams Gutjamsgard is his name, um, who collects Asker Jorn, so there's a sort of link in there. Um, and we really liked actually, yeah, this kind of, indeed, it, it sort of, and then it's all kind of facing outward so people can actually look at the process of what's happening when it detects faces, finds faces in the archive, shows the original archive pictures with their faces and replaces them and produces these kinds of loops. Um, yeah, which I think is a kind of, indeed, a sort of playful way to make people look at actually the kinds of algorithms that, of course, increasingly people are familiar with face detection uh, from uh, from their cameras and uh, yeah, um, I think we're good. Two minutes. <laughs> and actually, there's a particular moment that I quite like, and I thought that was a nice ending. Because um, <laughs> of course, I mean, part of this is I think a way to maybe ask questions about you know, increasingly uh, we're in a situation where these techniques are often used for surveillance. I mean, if, I, I think it would be a great supercut to put all the all the kind of uh, computer vision lectures that, that contextualize their work in terms of surveillance, surveillance, surveillance applications. Um, and I think it's really an interesting question, you know, how can you kind of empower uh, people as well, um, to, to maybe engage with these, rather than just be scared about uh, these technologies and feel kind of out of control of them, uh, really take them on and, and consider what they are as materials. Uh, and uh, so in that sense, one of the last, uh, yeah, the last image I'll show is just, uh, oh, <laughs> which one was it? 
Yes, so this was indeed captured one night, uh, which I kind of really liked that it was somebody both, you know, sort of giving the finger to this, to this face detector, but actually also doing it proudly. You know, this is not somebody kind of hiding away from it, but really performing for the algorithm, um, which, uh, yeah, I thought had quite some strength. Thanks. Thank you. Yep, for sure. So we have time for like three, four questions. If they're short, anyone has a question for the panelists? Now they're here. <laughs> well, we stay here. They're, they stay, yes. Um, I thought it was really interesting, particularly that you're sort of exploring com computer vision. And I wondered um, in the techniques that you use, whether you, how closely they represent what you understand in terms of how... how human vision works and visual processing? Have you kind of looked into those areas? I mean, do you want to say? We'll start. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, sorry. No. Yeah, so, I mean, the quick just response to say, based on, um, I mean, for me, it was really interesting watching, because <laughs> I would uh, look in on how this particular installation was working, and, um, yeah, I mean, of course, it does, you know, there's sort of a beautiful thing that happens with, as you get to sort of twilight, uh, images start to uh, pop up uh, as as the light changes and as indeed reflections start to become a bit strange. And so it's hard not to kind of anthropomorphize in some sense what the algorithm is doing. Um, and, you know, it's imagining things at twilight or it becomes the kind of dreams at night, you know. In fact, I think part of what's, but at the same time, what's very interesting is looking at the mishits. I mean, I think part of what this project w we tried to feature is the fact that phase detection often doesn't work. It's very particular what its vision is, as it, and indeed as a kind of recurrent theme with all kinds of machine learning and you know, looking at how, yeah, it, it does. It it is certainly based on kind of ideas about human perception, and indeed sometimes it really feels like it's working in that sense of wow, it's it's seeing something. But it's also a very particular, strange kind of kind of vision, and so we're as interested, I think, in the, in those kind of more exceptional aspects of it too. I think too often when they're presented, they're sort of overrated. People kind of present uh, facial rec recognition as something that really uh, works really well, and to some degree that's true, and to some degree there's something else. I think. Well, no, I think that that the, um, one of the point most moving, I think, is the this strange intersection between what we think human vision is and what the algorithm shows and, and how, yeah, as you say, it, it looks like it works and then it surprisingly doesn't at some point. Um, I think there is another uh, element that uh, was very important for us is the dimension of scanning uh, to, 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 to consider that um, what we learned from, from working with, with those algorithms is that they, they scan images. And um, scanning is a very strange word because it means at the same time really like going very quickly over something and it means also going very minutely with a lot of precision. And this discrepancy between precision and moving across, going through a large quantity then focusing on a sift point that becomes really the nail around which you can articulate a series of connection. This is not so far from something you can experience when, when, when I look at the scene here, probably that I, I will really brush off and then focus on something. So it's not so far, but it's really extended to uh, another magnitude of, uh, mm. of elements. And uh, I think that's v very important for, uh, because we, we are uh, obviously working with archives. And it's very important, I think, because it really connects um, uh, memory and vision in a way. Because, uh, for instance, to scan uh, is also, uh, scandé in, in, in French, it's, uh, it's to make verse. Uh, and to make verse, it's really, it's not just a way to embellish discourse, but it's also a way to be able to remember something because it has verses. And uh, this, this whole um, 
what what is revealed by all these features, these affinities, are ways to sort of anchor memory within the within the visual. Uh, I think that's very that's that's also a very important aspect of, of that. Yeah. So we have time for maybe one quick one. So I noticed that the uh, the the facial recognition thing seemed to have a bunch of things in the catalog that weren't actually faces. Did you set the threshold low, or did it actually pick those things up as faces? Yeah, I mean, I think part of what we were oh god, sorry. <laughs> part of what we were interested in in that case was, in fact, we were using different archives on it, and we switched back to this one. That was actually of Guterm's uh, guard, the, the the Norwegian graphic designer, and from a book which he calls Archive, by the way. Um, and we particularly liked that book because it has many examples. It revealed something about the kinds of objects he has. He has these beautiful kind of wire instruments or tapestries with particular graphic patterns and that he himself plays with in his layouts as faces you know he put or uh, you know uh, any kind of symmetry like uh, there's a beautiful book uh, the book of job uh, the the bible laid out by baskerville will detect faces in kind of symmetrical typography um so there was again a sort of overlap between um this algorithm, the kind of mishits of a, of a face recognition, and something which said something, which even Guturm, who himself is very skeptical of all kinds of software, he's in his uh, 70s, 80s, um, and, um, but he has to kind of laugh as well when he sees uh, the results. He recognizes something in it, and he's an immediately suspicious <laughs> of, of exactly how it's working, or as at one point he, we tried to describe what contours were, and at some point he says, ah, I understand, it's cheating. <laughs> And we say, yes, I think, I think so. So, um, a round of applause for the vanlist. <laughs>